yani that for me was the toughest and the worst part of the phd i cried so hard and then i called my mom and i was like mimi sitaki kusoma you will see fire i am not trying to be an alarmist i'm just telling you as it is be ready be strong you can do this Hi, if you've never seen me before, my name is Dr. Linda Modoni and as you can tell by the title, today we're talking about higher learning, particularly my PhD journey and things I wish I knew before I embarked on this journey. So, let's get started. I have my two notes here. <laughs> like the good student I am, the things I really feel like I need to talk about and also things that people often ask me so i've just basically compiled everything and then you know we're just going to talk about it before i even start telling you about things i wish i knew i think it's only right that i mention what my phd is in why i decided to do it and things of that nature i am currently pursuing a doctorate in philosophy of management and leadership at the management university of africa so first and main thing i'm going to be very honest for my parents Um <clears throat> my parents never really asked me to pursue it but I really wanted to make my parents proud particularly my dad who is a very hard to please type of person he never tells me directly that he's proud of me but he w- I will always hear it from my, like my uncles my aunties and family friends about him bragging about me but he da- he never tells me directly which I don't mind as long as he's proud my mom is proud I'm happy about that number 2 I got employed and I stayed employed for 2 years without enrolling for my masters. And the reason why I decided to enroll for my masters is I realized I had a lot of time on my hands and I also had a bit of money I had saved up given that I don't really have like a family to take care of or kids or things like that. I decided to fill up my time with my masters because also I felt that if I embarked on my masters journey it would be easy for me to grow career wise and I really wanted to do that. at a young age something else i'm passionate about what i was studying like from the beginning of my undergrad i did business management and then i majored in human resource it was either that or law and at that time i you know i wasn't really feeling like i, I wanted to go the law direction so i was like okay let me just stick to uh business management and that is how the journey started i have never had an issue with it ever since i started i feel like you know it's been going well so i'm happy about that Another reason I was just about to finish my masters and then one of my cousins who was currently doing her PhD oh my gosh she's so smart she's super super smart so she was like um what do you think why don't you do your PhD and i was like uh oh, I, i don't know like i just wanted a masters and i'm good nini nini cuz in any case mimi when i finished my degree i was like i'm never going back to school now i'm here being influenced to do my PhD and then i thought okay so i have the time again i have the resources so why not i'll be done at a young age and then i can focus on other things plus the doctor title is not so bad either you know <clears throat> in akujana ishima yake so i was like okay sawa let me do that in a nutshell those were some of the reasons why i decided to embark on my phd journey now let's talk about the things i wish i knew before i embarked on my phd journey and particularly let's just stay higher learning if in case you want to do your masters things that i wish someone had told me in advance especially because i was paying for my fees both masters and phd so let me get my kind notebook here <laughs> i have notes on notes on notes i have so many things i want to touch on but i'll keep it quick as i've said this does not only apply to phd's but just masters and higher learning in general okay so first things first let's talk about the cost breakdown so there's the fees there's the registration and then there are the permits that you need to pay for And then when it comes to chapter 4 because of course chapter 4 is data collection and depending on the the method of collection that you're using for me I used questionnaires the questionnaire had maybe like 10 pages or something like that you have to print these things those things don't come cheap unless if you just decide to buy a printer which of course is a cost on its own also by the way during the coursework you know you have to print the notes right like you have to print the handouts and what not that's a cost on its own i another thing running the data on SPSS So if you intend to run your own data of course you have to buy that uh, software have it installed on your laptop so if you don't have a laptop you need to buy the laptop and then you also have to buy the software and then if you don't know how to use the software like you have to pay someone to train you how to use it right if someone else is doing it for you you have to pay them for them to do that i mean unless if you have someone in your family who does SPSS then you're good and let me tell you these things are not cheap 
chapter four was damn expensive for me. If you have a job like a nine to five like me, um, you probably don't have the time to go and distribute this um, questionnaires you need research assistants to go and distribute these questionnaires all over the country you need to pay for the accommodation wherever they're going you need to pay for their food you need to pay for their transportation another cost that you need to look at is uh, publishing of articles again this depends on the university but there's no doctorate in kenya that you can do and not be expected to publish articles and some universities require up to four five or six art articles right some of these articles for you to publish them cost up to 60,000 Kenyan shillings. Of course, they are some as cheap as 15,000, maybe 20,000, depending on where you want to publish the articles. Like my university requires uh, between two to four. So you can imagine if each is costing you an average of like 30,000, you do the math. You know how much that, that, that amounts to. And then, of course, um, like going to school, you know, like the transportation to go to school, come back, depending on how you're studying. For me, at least for my coursework, I had the leisure of doing it online because just when I started my PhD in 2020, the pandemic happened. So it was easy for me to eliminate the cost of transportation because I was studying from home. However, if you take physical classes, of course, you have to go physically to school. And then when it comes to things like defenses, you cannot defend online. You have to go to school physically. So there's the cost of that, the fuel. And, you know, the reason why I'm even highlighting some of these small, small costs is we all know that the cost of fuel right now, it's not something to just brush over. It's something that, that I need to mention so that you can prepare. So those are some of the hidden costs that I'm talking about. Now that I've talked about the cost, let me go to my next point. Once you decide to embark on a PhD or a master's, you will have to make some sacrifices. I'm talking about my experience. If you're working and you're going to school at the same time, let me tell you, your social life will suffer. I remember when I was doing my master's, I was doing my classes on Saturdays. So anything that you intended to do on your Saturdays throughout the semester, forget it. You get it? If you don't get it, forget about it. You only have one day off, and most of the time, because of course you may not have a time during the week, the one day off, which is Sunday, you're probably working on your assignments or you're in a discussion group or whatever. You know, it's always something. So your social life will suffer. I'm just letting you know, and it's also very time consuming. You have to immerse yourself. Like, there's no way uh, to go around it. PhDs are very demanding it's like a baby as in you you cannot avoid it you have to commit yourself i was actually telling my friend this the other day ever since i started my masters and phd i always have this feeling of like nini misi jafanya, nini misi jafanya. you know i always feel like there's something i haven't done like an assignment or a cut or an article i've not published so it's very tedious but if i can do it you can do it okay i'm just letting you know how it is and then you can make your choice on your own Something else, um, I just felt I, I need to mention, you know, I don't know if it matters to some of you or it doesn't. Be ready for people to be inquisitive. Like the moment you say you're doing your doctorate, people want to know why, where you're doing your doctorate in what, when did you start, when will you finish? So if you don't like answering questions, maybe just avoid talking about it altogether. But now because, of course, for me, I'm in this content creation space, most people know that I'm pursuing my PhD. It's very hard to avoid it. People always want answers. So that's something that I find so wild. I don't really mind. I'm just letting you know in advance that people will be inquisitive. Something else that you need to prepare for, defensives. I, I don't, Yanni, <laughs> that for me was the toughest and the worst part of the PhD, let alone even chapter four, because chapter four was expensive, but the defenses, you will see fire. For PhD level, again, depending on the university, there's a concept paper, then you do the first defense of the proposal, and then the second defense, and then the oral defense. Mind you, it's not guaranteed that you will do three defenses. You can do up to 10 defenses, or even more. If you fail, you do it again. The way I like to explain defenses to people is like this. Just assume you've been working on a house for the last, like, let's say, two years. Then you invite guests let's say five guests and then from the moment they walk in through the door they criticize everything why is your paint like this why did you choose this tv do you know how many tvs there are 
let me tell you when it comes to defenses you have to know beyond what you've written you cannot just come and say uh okay um, i chose to do positivism philosophy for my data analysis and then you think that that's the end no there's bound to be a panelist who will be like so why did you choose uh positivism as opposed to realism they always expect you to know more than you've written because at the end of the day you need to own this document you need to prove that you've written this document depending on how good your document is defenses will go from three hours to even five hours you're just there yani people are just throwing stones throwing questions throwing criticism i do not recall a single defense that i did that i did not cry like i used to go back to my car and even master's level sawa kwanza i remember <laughs> My first defense for masters because I had never experienced that before. I cried so hard. And then I called my mom and I was like, Mimi, sitaki kusoma. Me, I'm tired. I'm never doing this again. I was so agitated. But with time, I got stronger. I got stronger. I got stronger. So defenses. Please be ready for that. I am not trying to be an alarmist. I'm just telling you as it is. I would advise you go to a private university because private universities, I mean, they're a bit more expensive, but you will study quicker and panelists are a bit more lenient as opposed to public universities so be ready be strong you can do this um many of us have done it before you and before you go for the defense know beyond what you've written another thing dealing with supervisors um in my university you only get two supervisors i got the leading supervisor amazing loved him and i've been able to study so quickly because of him He's pushed me so much. He's guided me so well. My second supervisor, however, was a lady. <laughs> and at first, you know, when I heard it was a lady, I'm like, wow, amazing. Like, now I have someone I can look up to, nini, nini, whatever. Unfortunately, it didn't work out because I used to send her, like, my proposal and be like, hey, here's my document. This is what I've worked on. This lady would never respond. And she gave me a really hard time. I thank God that immediately I told the uh, administration, they were like, no problem, because I had evidence showing that I'm sending her emails, I'm sending her messages, she's not responding. So I was able to get another supervisor. That's one of the reasons why I chose to go to a private university and a smaller one at that, because I knew I would have an easy time studying. Pray about some of these things. Even the supervisor that you are allocated will really determine whether you will enjoy your phd journey or not because sometimes you find that you hand in your paper to your supervisor he takes like three months to respond so you see that even drags out the period that you will take to finish your phd or your masters uh, before i even move on to the next dr cheluget and dr muicha i am so grateful you guys have made my phd journey such a success to the point where i am you guys have truly been a blessing in my life let's move on Something else that I feel like a lot of PhD or master's students feel when they don't talk about enough is imposter syndrome. There, there's a, a very heavy feeling of like, do I deserve this? Sometimes people call me Daktari and I'm like, am I even really living this life? You know, it's a very interesting phenomenon because on one hand you're like, yes, I've worked for this. I deserve this. But on the other hand, sometimes I just feel dumb and I'm just like, maybe i don't deserve this maybe i don't deserve to be a doctor especially now being in the content creation space people will say some things like you look like an influencer you look like a model i don't think they, they mean it in a bad way and if they do i don't take it that way sometimes i'll be like do i really do i really deserve to be called doctor or am i just imagining things but I, I have to remind myself i have earned this i have worked for this and i am allowed to be multifaceted and so are you you can be anything. If you want to be a pilot, come doctor, or a mechanic, come doctor, or a saloonist, come doctor, it's up to you. It's your life. You deserve this. You have worked for it. You earned it. And you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe that you can do it. I feel like I've gotten a bit preachy there, but you know, it's because and I've talked to a lot of people and I know the feeling. I really think it's important for us to talk about these things and to make sure that, you know, the people coming behind us know that these feelings are normal and we all get them. This doesn't just apply to the PhD. Anything that you want to do, you can do it. Failure to plan is planning to fail. I know we've heard about this a million and one times, but please hear me out. 
when it comes to your PhD, you need to have a time plan. You need to establish at what point do I want to finish my coursework? At what point do I want to have done my first proposal, second proposal, ETC? Because if you don't do that, you will find that you have done your PhD for like 10 years. When I was doing my defense, I was defending with some people who enrolled their PhD in 2016, 2017. And there's nothing wrong with that. But all I'm saying is, make sure you plan. And in any case, anyway, it's a requirement. While you're doing your PhD, you need to have a, a, a work plan. And you know, in some universities, by the way, the work plan is so serious to the point where like, for you to go for defense, you need to notify the university the intent of defense. So that takes time, you see? So make sure you plan. Sawa. So that even if things go off balance, because there are not a lot of things you can control, then there, there are very few variables you can control in PhD or even masters. Make sure you, you plan your work and make sure you're very intentional about your work plan. Okay, another thing, PhDs take time. Like I just said, there are very few things that you can control, but don't give up. There are people before you who've done it and you can do it. So make sure that you visualize your journey. Once you've done that, take your time to work towards that. Don't rush it. This is not something you can just breeze through. And even when things get tough, just know every day you wake up, you're getting closer to the end. So don't give up. Moving on. I know this might be contradicting because of what I just said, but it also goes by so fast. Like I literally cannot believe I started this in 2020 and now we're in 2023 and I'm, and I'm almost done. It's very mind boggling, you know, like on one hand, you feel like, oh my God, five years, six years, 10 years is so long. And then it's, it's gone in no time. So there's that contradiction. Like on one hand, it may feel like a long time, especially when you're going through it. But when you look back, you're like, oh yeah, three months are gone. I said that because I felt like much as I'm, t I'm giving you the facts and I'm telling you the truth, I think it's important for me to keep you encouraged as well. So time flies really fast. Don't worry, you will be done in no time. You need to know that having a PhD doesn't make you smart. It just makes you super knowledgeable about your area of expertise. Of course, you have to have some level of intelligence for you to get to that level of education. Because, I mean, you're at umefika musho amasomo. There's nothing past PhD unless if you want to go for professor title. So PhDs also generally give you like a different uh, perception, not just in your area of expertise, but even how you conceptualize things and how you look at variables and things in life is very different. I feel like I've been able to mature a lot mentally um, since I started doing my PhD. It's a journey I am very, very happy and very proud that I decided to embark on. Let me call this segment like the Q&A, maybe like the few questions off the top of my head I feel like I need to answer outrightly. It doesn't really matter. At the end of the day is the accreditation of the university. I feel like maybe I should mention that people who decide to go to different universities uh, in different levels of education versus someone who sticks to one university, the person who goes to different universities may have an upper hand because of exposure to different cultures. You know, you're able to like see what does Moi University do? What do people in USIU do? So even when you get into the end of your education, it has exposed your mind to different cultures, different types of people, all that. So it's good for you to expose yourself. Um, personally, I did, but not that much because I don't do very well with change. I, at my undergrad, I went to choir and then uh, both my master's and my PhD, I went to Management University of Africa. For me, I would encourage someone to go to different universities so that you get exposure. answer to that would be it's very important for you to identify what is your career path you know what exactly are you looking to get out of this because you cannot be a jack of all trades you cannot move from a phd of um, let's say engineering and then move to medicine right i mean you can no one will stop you but you will have to start from the beginning it doesn't mean just because you have a phd in something that you'll just go to the other field and start at phd level it's important for you to identify what exactly it is that you want to study. And once you've decided or once you've identified, okay, this is my area of interest, stick to it. I mean, you're allowed to do multiple fields. This is not to stop anyone at all, please. But all I'm saying is, as I have mentioned, you cannot be a jack of all trades. But you can be an expert of one. <laughs> Thank you.
assuming maybe you have a family to take care of and you still want to pursue your education how are some of the ways that you can go about that in terms of funding i know you can take loans um i know that there are some universities that offer research grants uh there is the option of scholarships um you can get a sponsorship from either a university or an individual or even relatives and you can also use your savings if you have them in case you don't have any of this i think the best op option would just be to go with research grants let me call this segment of this video aobs uh because there are a few things i want to address for me i really would encourage you to chase your dreams chase your dreams to the highest capacity the quality of life will get better with time especially if you choose to invest in yourself also i'm not superior or better than anyone who decides that you know education is not for them heck i know so many successful people who didn't even finish school and i'm just like what the hell is my phd for you know so this is not try to preach ati lazma usome so that you can be successful and to say that ati mimi i'm so perfect i've not made mistakes believe me i have made so many mistakes if someone young and impressionable is growing up and they see this video i would want them to know there is no rush please 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 just give your mind the time to mature and it's take the time to invest in yourself finally there's something called adversity quotient i feel like once you decide to pursue higher learning it it gives you a bit of an advantage when i tell you the way i used to respond to things back in the day versus now is very different i'm still growing i am not perfect i'm yet to get there but it has exposed me in so many ways i am way more responsive versus being reactive we all know there's a very big difference like when a doctor tells you your body is responding to this medication that's a good thing when the doctor tells you your body is reacting to this medication that's a bad thing so i would highly encourage anyone who wants to go after the education or to invest in the education to do it at the same time if education is not your thing i would encourage you to maybe start a business you know have these conversations with your friends and and something else by the way you know they say you are the average of five of your friends so surround yourself with the right people people who encourage you people who push you and at the same time be that person who pushes people and encourages people you know don't just be the absorbent sometimes you can be the giver you don't have to just be the taker so invest in yourself in whatever capacity whether that means education whether that means a business whether that means uh, having a child and you know raising them the right way whatever whatever investing yourself means do that because this life is short and we only get one i cannot close this video without saying thank you so much for you know the growth on my page this is my third video <laughs> i think uh, like maybe my 15th day i don't even know at this point i've lost count um on youtube and so far so good thank you so much for all the love on my videos i'm very grateful to each and every one of you who's taken the time to subscribe to like to share to comment if you have any questions in with regard to anything that i have mentioned or i have talked about in this video please leave them below i said this before and i will continue saying it please keep it respectful i'm trying to build a very healthy community on here on social media just keep it respectful whether it's positive or negative keep it respectful someone had uh, suggested on my previous youtube video that i get a name for my subscribers and i was thinking of dactari squad what do you guys think someone had said the glow squad but i don't know if there's any other youtuber who's using that name so i don't want to risk it but i feel like the dactari squad is safe for those of you who are not kenyans if you don't speak swahili dactari basically means doctor i want to see dactaris i want to see lawyers i want to see beauticians i want to see women of substance across across the board so it doesn't matter even if you're a cleaner even if you're um a pilot whoever you are as long as you're here whether you're male female we are just you know we're trying to elevate and help each other and do better for not only ourselves but even the community around us so i'm looking forward to you know this new journey and how we grow together with that said thank you so much for watching and i will see you on the next video Bye.